Hello, and welcome to A Rainbow in the Clouds. I'm your host, Elaine Marie Sharp, a certified color therapist and founder of Aura House School of Color and Light. Are you wishing for a fun adventure this summer? Stay tuned for episode number two, where I will guide you on how you can create your own color camp. You'll also learn how to make an emergency color first aid kit and how to write colorful postcards to your higher self. All that plus meditations and color breathing coming up next. Let's begin with a rainbow crystal grounding meditation. If you don't happen to have a crystal with you, please refer to the crystal image that you will find at rainbowpodcast.com. Okay, so let's take three deep breaths and call in your deities, your angels, and your spirit guides for love and protection. Now, pick up your clear quartz crystal and hold it in your left hand, which is the hand that you use to receive energy. And look closely at your quartz crystal. Notice all of its lines and cracks and chips and rainbows. Do you see the red, the orange? the yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now notice how you feel as you're holding the crystal. Are you feeling anxious, calm, Place your crystal on your heart and breathe in peace. Breathe out peace. Feeling a wave of calm and comforting, beautiful white light containing all the colors of the rainbow. Now place your crystal on your heart and breathe in peace. Breathe out peace. Feeling a calm and comforting wave of beautiful white light containing all the colors of the rainbow. Flowing through your heart and throughout your body. Breathe in peace. Breathe out peace. Breathe in peace. Breathe out peace. peace. Now, move your quartz crystal down to your root chakra, which is located at the base of your spine, 
and imagine that there is a long red cord attached to your root chakra and see that cord going down, down, down into the floor and into the ground going deeper and deeper and deeper until you see that the cord is connected to a giant clear quartz crystal in the middle of the earth. Now think or say aloud, I am grounded with the courage of red. I am secure with red. So now that you're grounded, let's do some blue sky color breathing. Close your eyes and think of the clearest blue sky that you can imagine. A gorgeous, gorgeous blue color. And each time that you see a cloud, whether it's white or dark, think of this cloud as your thoughts, your anxiety, your grief, your anger. But don't dwell on the clouds. Just notice them. Just notice them as they slowly drift by. And as you imagine the sky in your mind, breathe in that brilliant sky blue. And breathe out the blue. Breathe in the blue. Breathe out the blue. Wherever you are and whenever you want to clear and calm your mind, remember this blue sky color breathing. It's a great tool and nobody knows you're using it. How are you feeling today? If the answer is, I'm feeling stressed, or I'm feeling sad, maybe it's time to do something nice for yourself. Maybe you should let your inner child come out to play. Did you know that there is actually a National Institute for Play? There is. And they say that when we are deprived of playing, we are more prone to depression and addiction. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about finding ways to play with color. But first, you have to give yourself permission to play. It's also important to not feel guilty about anything. So don't feel guilty about the housework you could be doing or uh, the phone calls you could be making or the lawn that could be mowed. <laughs> it's really time to take a break. So let all that stuff go. So here is the backstory about color camp. One of the best things I ever did as a youth was I attended Girl Scout camp. And even though I probably didn't want to go at first. It, it is where I learned how to survive in the wilderness, although I have to admit that, that has not been tested yet. I learned how to pitch tents and build teepee fires and dig latrines, which, as you can imagine, was a dirty job that somebody had to do it because it was necessary. And I also learned how to make buddy burner stoves from coffee cans. At camp, I discovered how to make crafts like um, a colorful God's eye ornament from yarn and twigs. I also learned how to make practical things, like a box of waterproof matches and a wipeable sit-upon. 
Well, as you probably can tell, I am an elder scout now, but I've never been one to deprive my inner child. Just ask anybody who knows me. And one day I was feeling a bit nostalgic, so I got out the marshmallows and the chocolate bars and the graham crackers, and I made a a big messy plate of s'mores in the microwave. And after a few seconds, the timer bell rang, and as I stood there, I didn't even sit down for this, as I stood there and enjoyed that melted brown and white gooeyness, the idea struck me, and the idea was, wouldn't it be fun to create a camp online? Well, I did just that with the virtual color camp at Aura House School of Color and Light, and the camp had four different sessions, color first aid, nature color walks, colorful crafts, and sacred colors. And today, I'm going to guide you on how you can plan your own customized color camp at home in four easy steps. Step one. Since play is really key here, take a moment to remember some of the fun and colorful things that you did as a child. Did you paint watercolors? Did you color in books? Did you play with clay? Did you make necklaces with macaroni or Fruit Loops? I know I did. I did all those things and more. And then decide what it is exactly that you would like to create in your play shops. And yes, I said play shops because, again, that's why we're here. And your play shops could include journaling and art projects like finger paintings, sculpting with clay, building fairy houses, um, designing jewelry or tie-dyeing t-shirts, making a colorful macrame plant holder, making soap, creating a medicine bag for your crystals and gemstones, changing your hair color, that could be a play shop, sewing a colorful new outfit, or quilting, or making rainbow salads, or baking rainbow cupcakes. There's so much that you could do here. Step two, set aside some time for your color camp. Now you're probably sitting there going, um, duh. (laughs) Well, okay, duh, yes, but you need to determine how long you want your camp for. Should it be a day? Should it be a half day, a weekend, a month? And then after you've determined that, create an activity schedule for all your colorful events and then hang it in a central place in your home, like on your refrigerator door or your bathroom mirror. And you can also use this space to post affirmations and camp postcards. And I'll tell you about the postcards in a little bit here. Step three, designate a room or outside area for your play shops and then get out your colors. Yep, line up those tables with your crayons and markers and paints and pencils and stained glass, yarn, Marbles, (laughs) Marbles, <laughs> embroidery thread, whatever it is you're going to need for your play shops. Get them all out front and center. And so that brings us to step four. Hire your camp staff. Now you're probably rolling your eyes and shaking your head and saying, what is she thinking? <laughs> this is a private do-it-yourself, I'm all alone here camp. Yes, it is. But don't worry, it's not going to cost you a cent because all you have to do, all you have to do is search YouTube. And when you search YouTube, look for how to video instruction on whatever play shop you want to do. For instance, you might want to do a play shop on stained glass sun catchers. So once you've found that, you just bookmark it into a special folder on your computer browser. And guess what? Your counselors are ready whenever you are. And again, it didn't cost you anything. So that's how to plan your color camp. And of course, you are also welcome to add other fun activities like swimming and dancing and singing and taking nature walks. And I I like this idea to roast rainbow marshmallows over a blazing campfire. I think that's pretty cool. 
Now, at the end of the camp day, I suggest that you take some time to write postcards, not to your parents, no wish you were here kind of cards, no hello, mother, hello, father, but to your very best friend. You might think I'm referring to the creator, but in this case, I'm talking about your higher self, the all-knowing, all-seeing higher self, which is the wisest aspect of you. Think of your higher self as having your own Yoda. Okay, so in order to do the postcards, you have to first get some blank index cards. And on one side of your first card, draw a picture of you having fun in one of your play shops. Make sure that the colors that you use are vibrant and happy colors and, and, uh, and choose the colors that you're most drawn to. So you've drawn a picture of yourself having fun. And once that side is finished, just flip the card over and uh, think of this as a side where one would normally put the, the postmark and, and uh, the address. On this side, what you want to do is to write a brief question to your higher self. And it could be something like, how can I enjoy life more? Or how can I feel better? Or which color should I work with? And when you have finished with that first postcard, then it's time to create a second card from your higher self. And in order to do this, first just close your eyes and think of the question that you asked on the first card. Just repeat the question in your mind over and over. And when you do receive the answer, write the answer on one side of the card. This is your second card. And then for a few minutes, meditate on that message. Let it really sink in. And then afterwards, flip the card over and draw and color an image of some place that makes you happy. Any place on the planet, or maybe it's off the planet. Again, make sure that you're using nice, bright colors. Nice, bright colors. Nothing, nothing dark and gloomy here. And then after you're finished drawing that image, meditate on that image and those colors for a few minutes. And that's all you really have to do in creating your postcards to and from your higher self. Now, at every sleepover or day camp that I have ever attended, there's always been a first aid station or at least a first aid kit available for emergencies because you never know when somebody's going to get stung by a bee or twist their ankle while marking a trail. You know, I've thought about all the times in my life when it would have been really convenient to have a color first aid kit. You know, in regular uh, common first aid kits, you're likely to find an assortment of band-aids and gauze and antiseptics and burnt ointments and, and scissors and tweezers and all that. But the contents of your basic color first aid kit would be much more satisfying, I think, because they would be colorful and healing and beautiful, you know, um, things that make you want to go, ah, <laughs> So perhaps your color first aid kit could include crystals and brightly colored gemstones, maybe um, a miniature pen light that flashes white and colored lights, or rainbow candles, silky scarves and assorted colors, uh, colored tuning forks, colored eyeglasses, and color energy pillows. And who knows, perhaps it might also include powerful liquid medicine in the guise of seven colors of the rainbow. I have a wonderful starter kit with me today, which I am happy to share with you now. Only 
you have to use your imagination. This color first aid kit is white with a simple rainbow cross. Do you see it? Good. Now, open your kit slowly so nothing falls out and soon you will see seven glass bottles containing colored syrup. There is a red bottle as well as an orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet bottle. First, remove the bottle of red color syrup and examine the color red. Red is the first color of the rainbow and it is also the first chakra or root chakra which is located at the base of the spine. Red is the color of energy, passion, and survival. When red is balanced, you feel strong, grounded, and courageous. In your mind, I'd like you to imagine that you are removing the cap from your bottle of red syrup. Now, take one tablespoon of the sweet liquid which tastes like cherry pie. Or, if you don't like cherry, replace it with your favorite red flavor. Now, breathe in the color red and see it balance your spine and your kidneys, your colon, your legs, and your feet with the warm vibrational energy of red. You know, showing gratitude can be extremely helpful in our healing process. So once you have breathed a color, remember to thank the living energies for their assistance. It can be as simple as saying, thank you, Red, for giving me courage. So let's take a moment now to thank the color Red. Good. Whenever you're feeling chills or fatigued, you can add more red to your life by meditating on red gemstones like garnet or ruby. You can eat red food like apples, beets, cherries, and strawberries. You can use red essential oils of cinnamon or vetiver in your aromatherapy or cleaning products. You can wear a red outfit or drape yourself with a red scarf. You can listen to earthy African or Indian music. Now, let's look at the affirmations for the color red. An affirmation is a positive statement that is repeated so often that you begin to believe it to accept it as your truth. The corresponding affirmation for red is, I have. Here are some red affirmations you might try. I have strength. I have love. I have security. 
I have energy. I have passion. I have good health. I have control. Now, reach for your orange bottle, representing the second chakra, or sacral chakra, which is located two inches below the navel. Orange is the color of pleasure, sexuality, and emotions, and it stimulates the appetite. When orange is balanced, you feel more creative, joyful, sociable, and optimistic. Now, remove the cap from your bottle of orange syrup and swallow one tablespoon from your orange syrup, which tastes like peach pie. If you don't like peach, just replace it with your favorite orange flavor. Now, Breathe in the color orange and imagine that this warm color is balancing your genitals, your reproductive organs, your prostate, and your spleen. Now, Let's give thanks to the color orange. If you've ever been in shock or have had menstrual cramps, you can add more orange to your life by meditating on orange gemstones like amber or carnelian. You can eat orange food like apricots, carrots, oranges, or peaches. You can use orange essential oils of sweet orange or tangerine. And you can also listen to sensual Latin music. The corresponding affirmation for orange is, I feel... Here are some orange affirmations you can try now. I feel joy. I feel pleasure. I feel sociable. I feel a sense of well-being. I feel like dancing. I feel good about my body. The yellow syrup is next. Yellow is the third chakra, or also called the solar plexus chakra, which is located in the upper stomach. Yellow is the color of knowledge, self-esteem, and achievement. And when yellow is balanced, you feel confident, intelligent, and well-organized. So let's take one tablespoon from your bottle of yellow syrup, which in this case tastes like lemon meringue pie, or your favorite yellow flavor. Breathe in the color yellow, And see it balance your pancreas, your liver, your gallbladder, your stomach, and your nervous system. Now it's time to thank the color yellow.
If you are dealing with acne or depression or indigestion, you can meditate on yellow gemstones like citrine or topaz. You can eat yellow food like bananas, corn, grapefruit, or lemon. You can use yellow essential oils of grapefruit or lemon. And you can also listen to easy listening music like Andy Williams or Burt Bacharach. The affirmation for yellow is, I can. And here are some yellow affirmations. I can be happy. I can be healthy. I can be loved. I can be loving. I can do anything I put my mind to. And you are nearly halfway through your bottles now. And the next bottle is green. The green bottle represents the fourth chakra or the heart chakra, which is located in the heart. Green is the color of healing, compassion, forgiveness, and harmony. When green is balanced, you feel generous, healthy, and full of love. Now, Drink one tablespoon from your bottle of green syrup, which tastes like key lime pie or your favorite green food. Breathe in the color green and visualize that green is flowing through your heart, your arms and your hands. Now, thank the color green. Whenever you feel heartbroken or you just need overall healing, you can meditate on green gemstones like adventurine, chrysoprase, or malachite. You can eat green food like asparagus, broccoli, cucumbers, honeydew melon, or lime. You can use green essential oils of eucalyptus or pine. And you can also listen to New Age music performed by Stephen Halpern or Enya. The affirmation for green is, I love. And here are some green affirmations. I love my friends. I love my family. I love my home. I love my body. I love my life. I love to love. And now we move on to the cooler colors of the spectrum. Blue is the fifth chakra or throat chakra, which is located in the throat. Blue is the color of communication, sound, and self-expression. When blue is balanced, it is easier to speak and write with integrity. In your mind, reach for the bottle of blue syrup and swallow one tablespoon, which tastes like blueberry pie or another blue flavor. Breathe in the color blue and see it balance your throat your thyroid, 
your lungs, and your mouth. Now, give thanks to the color blue. When you want to add more blue in your life, you can meditate on blue gemstones like tanzanite or turquoise. You can eat blue food like blueberries. You can use blue essential oils of jasmine or sandalwood. And you can also listen to music that features woodwinds, like flutes and clarinets. The affirmation for blue is, I speak. And here are some blue affirmations. I speak to express myself. I speak to communicate. I speak up for myself. I speak without fear. I speak the truth. Indigo is the sixth chakra or brow chakra located in the third eye area between the eyebrows. Indigo is the color of intuition and connecting with your higher self. When indigo is balanced, you become more imaginative and inspired. So in your mind, reach for the bottle of indigo syrup and swallow one tablespoon, which tastes like deep blue grape juice. Breathe in the color indigo and see it balance your forehead, your pituitary gland, your sinus, your nose, your ears, and your eyes. Now, give thanks to the color indigo. For sinusitis and insomnia, try meditating with indigo gemstones like lapis lazuli or sodalite. You can eat indigo-colored food like blue grapes, you can use indigo essential oils of clary sage or rosemary. And you can also listen to slow orchestrated music. The affirmation for indigo is, I see. And here are some indigo affirmations. I see beauty in all things. I see beauty in all people. I see my intuition as a gift. I see what is right. I see what is wrong. I see myself as happy, joyful, and blessed. And now, there is just one bottle left to try. The violet one. Violet is a seven chakra, or crown chakra, which is located at the top of the head. Violet is the color of enlightenment, spirituality, and fulfillment. When violet is balanced, you are more wise, 
grateful and understanding. So let's take one tablespoon of the violet syrup now, which tastes like blackberry pie or your favorite violet flavor. Breathe in the color violet and see it balance your head, your pineal gland, and your central nervous system. Now thank the color violet. Whenever you are experiencing a headache or combating an alcohol addiction, meditate on violet gemstones like amethyst or fluorite. You can eat violet colored food like blackberries and eggplants. You can use violet essential oils of frankincense or lavender. And you can also listen to spiritual music like gospel or Gregorian chants. The affirmation for violet is, I know. And here are some violet affirmations. I know I am happy. I know I am intelligent. I know I deserve happiness. I know I deserve love. I know I have much to contribute. I know I can achieve great things. So now you have used all of the bottles in your Color First Aid Kit, which means the meditation has ended. Open your eyes and feel better. I'm Elaine Marie Sharp, and you have been listening to A Rainbow in the Clouds. As we close this episode, here is today's tip on how you can become a rainbow blessing in someone's cloud. Using the energy of red, you can help a person conquer a fear. Red is the color to turn to for stability and courage. If you felt inspired by this broadcast and would like to know more about my work with color, please visit my website at colortherapyschool.com. I'll be back on September 7th to talk about how color can help us with shock and grief. Until then, no matter how you feel or where on the planet you live, don't forget to stop and enjoy the pretty colors. <music>